chapter 14. Those initiates, Mustai, who called themselves Bak Choi, looked to Orpheus as their prophet, depicting him as sent by the deity as a revealer of truth about the soul, life after death and salvation. Hence Orpheus was viewed as the founder of the soteriological rites, Teletai, of Dionysus Bak Choi's who sends his telestic mania and unhinges the supplicants into madness, and Dionysus Lucios, who frees from madness and transmigration. These Lusioi Teletai of Bakchios are centred on purification as an art of separation. West assumes that the Bacchic and Pythagorean Orphica probably represent two parallel developments from a common field of origin. At the same time, he presupposes a conceptual link between Pherosides of Syros, the famous seer who promulgated the theory of metempsychosis and allegedly brought together the poems of Orpheus and Pythagoras. The Orphic doctrines are fragmentarily attested by the golden leaves and plates that bear testimony of the Orphic preparation for death analogous to the paideia provided by the Egyptian officiants in the House of Life, per Ang. Those who composed, recited, and ritually performed the Book of the Dead, per em Hru. In Egypt, death is regarded as a way to real life in the realm of Ahu. Like the nocturnal Ra, the deceased philosopher king is transformed into a scarab, and a child encircled by the Uruburic serpent who burns millions. The Egyptian hermetic illumination regeneration quote, appears as the mystery which saves, end quote, and its central motif consists in the noetic vision, quote, following an ancient model of cosmic journey which is actually an interior journey. End quote. That quote from Giovanni Philomot Ramos the transfiguration of the inner self in Gnostic and Hermetic texts, transformations of the inner self in ancient religions, 1999, pages 143 and 45. According to the Egyptians, both humans and gods originate in the all-embracing deity, the One Alone, though the gods issue from Atom's sweat and humans from his tears. As Asman observes, these primeval humans are probably referred to in a way that means clients. That is, those who at the beginning appear as the community of the noetic flock, the primordial saints, Sufi Aulia. In this sense, they are contemplators, knowers, philosophers. Here below, as Atom Ra is above, after heaven is raised up on high at the end of a golden age, and the gods are separated from fallen humanity. As the embodied beings whose telos is to restore the perfect state of solar contemplation, humans are oracular creatures, for whose sake the world was created as the theurgic theatre of the divine eye. The creation is accomplished, or rather constantly performed, by the thinking heart, intellect, and then by the speaking tongue, logos, and by writing or drawing, ta hierogrammata, the writing of divine speech, sesh en meru neta. According to Asman, this quote from Jan Asman's book, Egyptian Solar Religion in the New Kingdom, Ray, Amon and the Crisis of Polytheism, 1995, page 165. Writing only carries out what is already implicit in the structure of reality. The structure is quote-unquote hieroglyphic. It is a kind of Platonism. Plato interprets the visible world as the infinite material impression of a finite set of immaterial ideas. The Egyptians interpreted the visible world as a kind of infinitely ongoing series production, which very faithfully follows an original finite set of types or models, and the same set is also represented by the hieroglyphic system. End quote. To be restored as the hieroglyph of the eye, means to enter the solar bark of Ra and join his all-embracing noetic contemplation by, way, by means of the life-giving rays. The Orphic text on the golden tablet from the grave of Thessalian 
Petra Poros, conveys a similar claim. Quote, now you have died, and now you have come into being. O thrice happy one, on this same day, tell Persephone that Bacchios himself has set you free. End quote. The blessed deceased emerges into the realm of divine being when his mortal body passes away. He is invited to the holy symposium of the gods in order to enjoy eternal drunkenness. According to a mocking remark made by Plato, this drunkenness in the company of the re-divinized Orphic saints is in fact tantamount to the noetic bliss of the Osirian Olbioi, the blessed ones. Those who received a gift of memory, Nemosunes Doron, the blessed ones appear in the form of Ach in the court of Ra, where Setne's Ba is going in hope to see the future and get information from the gods. The Egyptian goddess Hathor initiates the ascent to heaven and is depicted as rising in turquoise from the eastern horizon. Hathor, the house of Horus, is the goddess of ecstatic drunkenness, dance and music but her essential hypostasis is the fiery eye of Ra. She is the Iret eye that, quote, acts as the agent of the god's activity, end quote. The deceased, or the initiate, the one who knows things, Rek a Ket, the sage, Remet Rek, is equated not only with Osiris, but also with Hathor, thus immortalized as the solar gaze, and the fiery beauty, Nefer, of truth, Mart. <laughs>